Please, sir, sir, we'll start now. Uh, okay, madam. Shall I start, madam? So wait, sir. Please, sir, we'll give the introduction. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> ma'am, start with Lama. Yes, sir. We can start, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Good morning, everyone. As so I am really happy to invite you all uh, for this fourth. Uh, day of uh, this sttp short term training program on supply chain management uh, so i received uh, our honorable guests buyer attires a, a very lengthy one at having uh, 21 pages so i try to uh, brief it in 3 uh, to 4 minutes dr r anandam uh, he is having a pile of uh, degrees msc in agri, agri then phd then post doctor fellowship in south korea He is working as a professor in agriculture and microbiology, Department of Agriculture and Microbiology, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University. He did his uh, PDF postdoctoral uh, fellowship at South Korea. Uh, his ac uh, academic accomplishment, a postdoctoral scientist from uh, 2008 to 2009 in Organic Agriculture Division, National Academy of Agricultural Science, Republic of Korea. He is a PhD in agricultural chemistry. He is specialized in uh, soil plant microbiology uh, from uh, Cheonju Republic of Korea. His uh, MSc degree is agricultural microbiology from Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, Coimbatore, India. So a lot of awards and uh, fellowship programs and recognition honors he is having in his bag. And and uh, some very few awards i am mentioning here best poster presentation award best researcher award outstanding faculty award uh, society of applied biotechnology awards excellence in agricultural microbiology awards so still a lot he is having under his name then he is also having a uh, lot of fellowships uh, uh, fellowships uh, in his name uh, he received a fund of 1 crore and 65 lakhs then he is having 67 international journals published in different uh, foreign journals he is having uh, nine book chapters under his name he is having a patent in micro organism mixer of gigaspora micro morcorita s23 by korean uh, ip office korea he is having 12 national journals under his name 35 national uh, and international symposium paper presentations he is having is in a lot of uh, um, membership in lot of uh, societies uh, specifically american society of microbiology microbiologist of uh, india korean microbiology and biotechnology so with this uh, short introduction i handed over the session to dr anandam sir please uh, okay thank you sir so thank you very much for your nice introduction dr ramreshwar thank you sir uh, the most respected organizers Dr. Y. Sabri Rajan, Dr. Y. Vande Suren, and Madam, I don't know her name. Then, uh, I, uh, Subhashini, Dr. Subhashini, Madam. Then uh, participants uh, who have joined this online meeting. Then, present. Good morning to everyone. So, basically, I am a microbiologist. So, I am receiving my advance apology to management scientists. If I made any wrong, kindly excuse. So your organizer asked me to deliver a talk on prospective of agri business for supply chain management in agriculture policies and value addition. So when we consider rural scenario, India's 49% of workforce they produce only 70% of GDP. When we consider India, agriculture productivity is very low. Then on-farm jobs are stagnant. Then they are they are declining. Okay. so when we consider productivity of crops and livestock is very low in national apart from this we could observe the high regional variations for example we are getting more yield from gangetic plant punjab punjab region as well as kavri delta region so whereas in rajasthan and some part of the karnataka and some part of the southern regions of tamil nadu we are getting the very low yield from the crops okay So apart from this, the water conservation and water use efficiency is very low compared to major agricultural countries like USA, China, Brazil. Okay, then farmers quite often they do not realize proper remuneration. They are not getting the proper remuneration. Then most of the time they are not even getting the minimum support price 
all because of existing agricultural marketing system. So this system delivers only very small fraction of amount to the farmers for their produce. Okay. So in this scenario, government of India aims to increase the or double the farmers' income by 2022. So which requires increase the productivity of field crops. What are mean by field crops like rice, maize, sorghum, millet, millets, or millets? These are comes under field crop. Then horticulture crops mean vegetables, fruits, and plantation crops. Dairy and animal husbandry, poultry and fisheries. Then, apart from this, our government aim to increase the value of the or price for the farm producers. Okay. So recently, government of India taken several such measures to increase the productivity of land. So when we compare the Indian agriculture with major agricultural countries like China, Brazil, and USA, so we use two to four times high water to produce one unit of the major food crops compared to these countries. Because of this, so government of India they have launched the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Chinchin Yojana to support the uh, support for sprinkler and drip irrigation to increase the water use efficiency. But apart from this, they want to increase the area under irrigation so that we can get the sustainable yield from the lands. Okay. So what is the existing system of uh, system in our uh, agriculture? So we have uh, one fragmented value chain. So we have a inputs. So inputs are seed, fertilizer, then land. So these inputs, then farmers use these inputs. They produce the farm produce. So it goes to commercial agent. It goes to wholesaler, then processor. Rarely it goes to processor, then distributor, retailers, and consumers. Okay. So sometimes, so from the producers, it goes to retailers as well as the wholesalers. So what is the peculiar thing in this? Each one, so each each own each own component, they are called as actors. They are acting independently. So what are the uh, main features of this fragmented value chain? Is there is no relationship, good relationship between each and every own component. So each and every each and every component, they are acting as an adversary. They are treating as an enemy. Then most of the time, transactions are taking place at one spot. Then always farmers are uh, forced to take the Risk okay. So in this fragmented value chain, there is no sharing of technology and a market information between the each and every functionaries. Okay. So because of this fragmented value chain, processors uh, they face a problem of getting quality uh, quality of raw produce. So they they were unable to trace the raw material for the processing industry. Okay. So, because of this, government in India, they are they are, they are taking the concert effort to increase the agri business or improve the farmers' uh, income. Uh, since from 1960, in the year 1960, government of India they have passed the APMC, that is the Agriculture Produce Market Committee Act. So, from this act, they, they each and every state they have a, in a they have a APMC market. Then 2013, so the state can introduce state can introduce the uh, they can include the private participation. Then 2015, the National Agriculture Market has been employed. It has been established in the 2016. Then Kapinga Commission and says. Then apart from this, so in in, in the 2016, they are given they are ready to give the credit. What are the produces stored in the uh, warehouses as well as the yards? So in the year 2020, so over uh, two or two or three months before, Government of India they have enacted two act. So that is the Farmers Produce. Trade and Commerce Act 2020. So this act also called as the Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Promotion Facilitation Act 2020. So being a talk from the Agriculture University, so it is my duty to bound responsible to to reveal the what this act says. Okay. So this act is aimed to create an ecosystem where the farmers and traders enjoy the freedom of choice relating to the sale and purchase of farm produces. Okay. So which facilitate the The regulatory price for the farm producers that can be done through competitive alternate trading channels. Also, this act promote the efficient, transparent, and barrier-free interstate and interstate trade and commerce of farm producers. Okay, so this act also supports the then uh, supports the sale of producers apart from the traditional designated marketplaces. This act also promote the e-trading of the farm producers. Okay. So this act uh, define the farmers. Who is the farmer? So who is the benefit? Who is going to get the benefit? Farmers. Then this act define the farmers. That is, any person they are engaged in the production of farm produces or 
by self or they can hire the labor otherwise they must be the one of the members in the fo that is farmers producer organization so what is the farmer producing uh, farmer producer organization so it is the association of the farmer that name can be anything that must be registered under the company laws so that is the section 9a of the companies act 1956 that permit the registering the farm producers organization so this kind of uh, this kind of few are supported by the they receive the generous funds from state government as well as the central government okay so what is the main slogan of this uh, uh, main slogan of this uh, act mean one nation one market so that is no restriction on inter or intra state trade okay so what is meant by interstate trade that means buying or selling of the farm produces within the, the, in the state that can be freely transported to the outside the state or uh, away from the origin of the state that is called as a interstate trade in case of intrastate trade that means buying or selling of the farm produces from the originated so that can be uh, traded in the same state away from the that original uh, origin okay so this act does not cover the apmc listation of state then union territory which are enforced in the state as well as the union territory so what is the main thing the apmc means apmc so in uh, in case of punjab uh, punjab and samaj northern states so the, it is a offense to sell palm producers outside the apmc whereas in tamil nadu there is no such restrictions the farmers wish they can sell their product at apmc agriculture producers market uh, otherwise they can sell in the open market okay so this act does not include premises enclosures structure apart from this so uh, while enacting this act apmc of state and union territory they have a market yard sub market yard so these are not covered by the this act okay so this act covers the trade area trade area mean any area or location place of production or collection and aggregation including the farm gate factory premises cargo silos then cold storage is they are not under control of private they are not under control of government that comes under the trade area of the, this act okay so so here this act this act defines the buyer who is the buyer so who is the trader is the buyer so how they uh, how this act defines a trader so person who buys the farmers produce by way of interstate trade or intrastate trade or a combination of thereof either for himself or behalf of some person or purpose of wholesale trade or retail or in use value addition processing manufacturing export or Uh, 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 on his own consumption so these are the quality of the traders defined by this act okay so how trade will be conducted in this trade area any farmer or trader or farm producer or apos or agriculture cooperative society or some of the e trade organizers they they have a freedom to carry out inter or intrastate trade and commerce of their farm producers designated by the trade area by this act okay so what are the other provisions are uh, in this act pan card is must for the traders payment must be reached within the same day or within three working days to the farmers then after getting the farm producers receipt must be given to the farmer there is no market marketing fee so this is the peculiar uh, thing in this uh, act so when we consider apmc whenever the farmers intend to sell their farm producers in apmc of state or uh, union territory they must they have to pay the marketing fee whereas this act abolishes the marketing fee they get their they they are, they are given freedom to sell their product okay apart from this the price information and market intelligence systems are educated to the farmers okay then this act also to facilitate the e trading uh, by fo or agriculture cooperative society or any person they are having the pan card okay then uh, nowadays the government of india is working the minorities for the e trade <clears throat> okay so this are the features of the uh, uh, this act whenever dispute arises so what uh, what is the solution so here solution is local and quick and very simple okay so mutually acceptable solution can be get through conciliation or uh, 
we can submit of any any party buyer or seller uh, we can submit application to sdm sub divisional magistrate okay the sdm they consider one board with a chairman with the maximum four members so members are representing the both the parties okay so whenever uh, parties they are not interested to nominate the members those members can be nominated by the sub divisional magistrate okay so in this act so in this um, memorandum can be settled uh, by the both the parties within 30 days okay so whenever the, the committee considered by the sdm not able to settle the issue then issue can directly taken by the sdm for dispute resolution okay so sdm is also authorized to take the sumoto action so whenever things are uh, uh, application goes to sdm so my subdivisional magistrate can settle the issue within the 30 days okay so is the um, can impose the penalty or recover amount uh, or they can restrain the trade uh, dispute from undertaking the any further trade directly or indirectly for a period of time okay sometime that uh, consolidation may not be or uh, that uh, wait from the sdm um, not convincing me agreed party they can uh, may, uh, may, may they can may prefer for uh, appeal before the appellate authority uh, the appellate authority is are collector or Uh, nominated additional collector again uh, appeal should be done within the 30 days the order of the sdm or uh, appellant authority shall have a force of the decree of the civil court so what is the uh, what is the value of the uh, word given in the court so that much uh, that much value is given to the word from the sdm or appellant authority so that that can be fungible by the law okay so even in this case agriculture marketing advisor or this nominee in state government so when a dispute arises in the e trading so they are the responsible for this okay so the agriculture marketing advisor uh, or this nominee in the state so they can order the within 60 days for recovery of the amount that must be payable to the either farmers or traders okay so again appeal should be reached within 60 days some special cases appeal can be Uh, can uh, can be re, uh, can be uh, can be made at 90 days okay so again in e trading any dispute arises agreed party they have to write uh, they, they can approach for joint secretary government of india in this case disposable can be done within 90 days okay so these are the <clears throat> these are the main features of uh, the farmers producer and trade and commerce act of government of india so when we move on to agro processing and the value addition mean india has achieved only 10% of value addition and compared to developing countries they have achieved only seven, they have achieved 70 to 80% of value addition of their farm producers okay so high level of food processing and the value addition is is essential for making the quality agriculture commodity so to stand the competitive market to raise the farmers income so these day small and medium enterprises they are being transformed to larger unit by using the modern technology to <clears throat> to make their uh, product competitive to stand in the global market <clears throat> so what are the characters of food processing industry there must be a competitive equitable and inclusive so what is make competitive so industry has to competitive in terms of price hygiene quality assurance and proper packing equitable to mean none of the element should be able to exploit the other elements of the value chain for example input producer processor and uh, end users so no one can uh, no one can be allowed to exploit each other okay in case of inclusive mean farmer or producer should be treated as a strategic business partner not an enemy not an adversary okay so this can be achieved by establishing integrated value chain so previously we have seen the fragmented value chain so now we move on to integrated value chain which includes the input producer so we see that after producer all from producer from producers must go to the processor retailers and consumers okay then so here we have to ensure the strategic business relationship in each and every actors inputs producer processors like this so present agro industry wants to create an integrated value chain so that they can get processable quality raw material by dealing with the farmers directly okay so what is the present scenario of food production in india so it is adequate but not easily accessible to the farmers why means 
So inadequate incomes earned by the 28 percent of the Indian populations, they are unable to unable to buy buy food. So apart from this, we are putting the uh, high value for the farm producers because we are wasting the more and more producers after harvest. So that which is equivalent to 44,000 crores uh, producers are being wasted at every time. Okay. Apart from this, inadequate livelihood opportunities that uh, that rural populations that don't have purchase power to get the quality food. Okay. So high level of food wastage are due to the shortage of storage spaces. So it is a common scenario. Every time we are buying the uh, buying the tomato 80 rupees per kg, but one day we are getting the one rupees less than one rupees per kg. So we don't have a appropriate storage places to show, store the perishable. Agriculture products are highly perishable. So we have to yeah, expand the available storage spaces. Apart from this, which uh, mismatch between the agri exports and agri imports, then. Huge quantity of underutilized crop residues and processing byproducts, so which leads to loss of income that shake the environmental sustainability. Okay, then so in most of the uh, in Indian uh, Indian agriculture, so after the farm produce, they, they they are directly taken by the consumption agent. They are not going for agro processing or value addition. Okay, so in terms of wastage, we waste more fruits. And vegetable because they are highly perishable. So they which are they are cons which are come more than the product consumed in the UK. So what is the cumulative waste in India that is worth to 6.7 billion dollars, which is equivalent to the 40 percent of the total agricultural produces? Okay. So why this happened? Because of poor infrastructure and logistic support, then rough and under unorganized handling. Okay. So when we compare with China, India has 70 percent more arable land. So arable land means that is agricultural land area under cultivation, but produces 30 percent less than the China. So, so India, even though India is uh, India is suffer from this, India is the first in the production of cereal, milk, milk product, second in the fruits, vegetable, and fifth in the groundnut, rice, wheat, tea. Coffee, sugar, spices, and oil seed. So, Indian agro industry size is which is equivalent to seventy billion US dollar, but we process only less than two percent of the farm produces. Indian agro industry they are giving the uh, one uh, giving the employment to the one point six million people. So, which is the thirty percent of the country exports and six percent of the industry in this land. Okay. So when we consider uh, major losses is so as I said earlier that is the fruits and vegetables are and they are highly perishable. So in case of guava, so 18 percent of the guava produced are wasted, followed by tomato and groundnut. So what is the problem in groundnut storing? So we cannot store groundnut for a long time. So there is a fungus, Aspergillus, that will totally to, totally spoils the groundnut storage. So in case of loss, the minimum was noticed again in vegetable, cabbage, followed by sapota and Chickpea, okay. So when we consider on-farm losses, that was maximum in sugar cane. That was maximum in sugar cane. That is 7.8 percent, followed by turmeric. So when we look into the storage losses, that was maximum in wheat, followed by the marine fishes. Okay. So what is the global picture? So in in case of developed country, after value addition, they are adding the US 180 dollar for every one ton of the product produced by the process. Okay, 90% of the agricultural produce is produced from the developed countries or high-income countries. They are undergoing industrial processing. Uh, so, whereas 30% of the agricultural produce is being processed in case of developing countries. Okay, so these developing countries, uh, they are adding the one very less value, which is 40 dollar for one ton of value, one ton of processed produce. Okay, still they have to improve the their processing uh, processing. When we speak honestly, uh, India had only 1.3 percent of the farm producers, which is against the 30 percent of first harvest first harvest processing in the some uh, developing countries. Okay, so present uh, agro processing activities are for production to consumption chain of agro processing activities. So like this, producer they they are unable to process anything. So that will be that yeah, that those farm producers are being sold in the existing market system. So whenever producers are they uh, they are processed in the rural food processing industry that can be considered as a partially processed product 
uh, that can reach the specific market, producers market, so that can reach the specific consumers. Consumers, okay. So, what are the agenda of agro processing facilities? So, primary, secondary processing the main producers. Then, bypass utilization. We have to give much important to this. Then, we have to maintain a sustainable supply chain management system. Then. And then we have to establish custom fire services. Then we have to concentrate on product quality and safety and marketing. So what are the priorities area in this uh, agribusiness? So we have to expand the level of processing of food grains, fruits, vegetable, dairy, and animal husbandry product. Then we have to raise the uh, level of processing of farm producers of primary produce, secondary produce, and tertiary produces. Okay. Then we have to modernize the our food processing equipments. So with the with installation of high end equipment, so that we can enter into the high competitive market, we can deliver the better quality producers. Okay. Then ensure the adequate quality of the training for the workers, supervisor, and manager to handle the advanced instrument which I have been installed in the processing industry. Okay. We have to provide the skill and knowledge uh, to the farmers. For ensuring the part, uh, uh, ensuring the production of quality produces through adoption of GAP, that means good agriculture practices. Okay. Then apart from this, we have to encourage the post-harvest uh, processing and value addition. So we have to ensure the <clears throat> sustainable supply chain management. Okay. So what does mean by value addition in agriculture? So value addition means that is adding the value. That means. The process of changing or uh, transforming the product from its original state to a more valuable state. Okay, for example, so wheat. From the wheat, we can be uh, uh, that can be sold in the market as a grain, but that will purchase the very small amount. So wheat can be converted into the product that is a flour that can be converted into any desired product to the customer like a um, like a bread and chapati. Okay, that will purchase a high price compared to the cold wheat grain. Okay. Then value addition can be done by means of two ways, creating value, then capturing the value. Value can be created by innovation as well as the industrial innovations. In case of uh, capturing value can be done by the coordinations. Okay. So value can be created by launching the innovative new products, then enhance the product characters, then enhance the services, create a brand name, develop new customer for that particular product. Okay. So value can be captured by means of direct marketing, vertical integration, producer alliances, and cooperative efforts. Okay. So what is new direct marketing? Then we can sell the product directly to the consumers. Uh, otherwise, selling the homemade soaps and motion to the general public, we can think of eBay. Okay. So what is the vertical integration? Here, producer or business own the product from beginning to end. So they won't make anything unless otherwise then trader uh, purchases by the product. For example, poultry. So poultry can be raised, chicken can be raised. So when can be sold? Whenever trader or consumer, they can approach at the time only, or can sell the product. So instead of this, then we can, can, we can make a Tyson chicken or uh, KFC. Okay. So what is the uh, producer alliances? So here individual or companies from the same level of the food chain, they can consolidate themselves in order to produce the market superior product. So in case of cooperative efforts, individual or companies pool their product in order to increase the bargaining power. So this we can uh, observe in our rural area. So most of the time, so what the farmer they did, so after milking, so we can be we can be delivered at the cooperative society. They they do uh, they do processing. So farmers they intern, so they can put the price for the milk. Okay. So what are the strategies for adding the value? There are the six uh, strategies. One is a farm value, location value, time value, ownership, or position value, and information value. So what is my farm value? So here, we are converting the raw material into finished or uh, semi-finished product. Uh, we can increase the, by this way, we can increase the usability of the product. We can process, or uh, we can pack. In this way, we can increase the farm value. Or by simple cleaning, grading, shorting, that will increase the farm value of the our farm producers. Okay. So location value. So we have to deliver the product at interest place. So that may be a door to delivery or mail order 
or internet sites. Okay, that is called as a location mapping. Originally, that uh, product is needed. We have to find that places. So we should deliver the product that places alone. Okay, then time value. So product must be reached on time by means of using the any transport, uh, any transport. Okay, then ownership value or possession value means so equipments can be given for rental. Then, for example, tractors can be given for uh, rental. Apart from this, the land can be leased, or the farmers they can get a land for contract farming. Then, sometime the previously or previously material is stored in the warehouses or storage room. They are not giving, they are not unable to get any credit from the bank. So, this the scenario has been little changed. They can get a loan or a top credit for this uh, product. Okay. Then information value. So we have to inform and educate the farmers to sell their product in a good quality market. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can educate the farmers to go for value addition or first harvest processing. We have to persuade the farmers. Okay. So in the, uh, apart from this, uh, we can improve the uh, marketability of the product by means of advertising, packaging, and labeling. Okay. We can give the uh, promo offers to get the um, uh, palm producers get marketed. Okay. So, what are the RMB organization in India? They do agro processing. Uh, so, for example, CFTRI. So, they are the pioneering institute that is the Central Food Technological Research Institute, MISO. Then, CIFED, Central Institute for Storbus, Engineering Technology, Ludhiana, which is, under, which is part of the PAU, Punjab Agriculture University. Then, IRI, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi, DRI, National Dairy Research Institute, Colonel. They are exclusively concentrating on the Milk product, DFRL, MISO, they are defense. They are looking at the defense uh, produce, uh, defense food material. Then IIT, Garakpur, then where our university stands, TNA, Yukamatu. So we have a good quality of processing lab uh, to process the uh, to process the agricultural produces. Then GAU, Gujarat Agriculture University, Anand, then Rajasthan Agriculture University. Then in Tamil Nadu, we have VPRC. It was previously PPRC, now it is renumbered. Indian Institute of Post Harvest Processing Technology, see that. Then ILRI, that is the Indian uh, Lack Research Institute, Ranchi. Then IVRI, Indian Veterinary Research Institute, is that my name? So, CIRCA, which is in Mumbai, they exclusively concentrating on uh, cotton product. Okay. So, what are the visible benefits we could get the first harvest operations mean for, for simple cleaning and weighing of fruits and vegetables? We can increase the 20% of the income. Uh, simple drying, we can increase the, we, we can get the additional income of 30%. Then, preservation of fruits and vegetables, which fetches for additional 15.5% income for the uh, farm producers. Okay. So, likewise, so we can get the simple operation. Uh, we can uh, we can increase the income of the farm producers. Okay. So nowadays, uh, uh, every business uh, business in farm producers they comes under one umbrella that is called as agri business. So, so agri business uh, that was a definition given by John Hatch Davis in the in the year 1955. It is a emerging as a specialized branch of knowledge in the field of management science. So in this context, agribusiness can be defined as science and practice activities with backward and forward linkages related to production, processing, marketing, trade, and distribution of raw material and processed food, feed, fiber, including supply of inputs and services for these activities. Okay. So what is the main aim of agribusiness concept is commercialization of agriculture. So we have to commercialize agricultural producers, then transition of substance level of farming to commercial agriculture. So previously, what farmers uh, do mean, so they, they are not aware of their market potential and uh, these, uh, these things. So they, they raise the crop for their family, for to meet out to meet the daily expenditure. So that is called as a substance level of farming. So agribusiness is the transition of our farming to a substance level of two, level, level two, commercial agriculture, okay. Apart from this, agribusiness, uh, agribusiness, so that will bring the close, uh, closer of the farmer as well as the producer, uh, person industry, uh, very close to each other. They want to establish the link between these uh, components in order to achieve the sustainable supply chain, uh, supply chain in agribusiness. So agribusiness, which includes many facets, not only production, that, by, that can be done by the farmers, or hatchery managers, which also includes the 
uh, organization which provides in food, seed making industry, uh, seed processing industry, fertilizer making industry, food processing industry, fabric cartels, also which consider the part of the output uh, output plants like the processing industry, then manufacture of the various products. For example, a tractor making industry, agriculture implement making industry, they are the part of the agri business system. So, which also includes the transporters, sellers, and brokers. Ah, uh, they are they are also part of the agri business systems. Okay. So, when we draw a Venn diagram, you could see the overlapping of input sector, production sector, and processing and manufacturing sectors. So, success of the uh, uh, each part depends upon the proper functioning of the others too. So, that will ensure the and so the uninterrupted supply chain okay so when we talk about indian scenario of agri business so uh, indian industry should aim to increase the processing of perishables that is 20% increase the value addition present level of 20% to 30% so that can increase the global trade share from 1.6 to 3% here our national policy aims to increase the level of food processing to 25% in the year 2025 Okay, so what are the emerging sectors in agri business? So IT in agriculture, rural development, food service management and value addition, horticulture and food product marketing, NGOs in agriculture and rural development. So these days, government, state government, central government, they are giving lot of subsidies to NGOs to enter into the agriculture, agriculture to ensure the. Uh, farm producers then agriculture action services so this is the so this can be done by the central government by means of indian council of agriculture services uh, and the uh, indian council of agriculture research they are establishing the kvks um, across the uh, across the country so in kvk they are in, uh, they are employing the subject matter specialist to educate the farmers okay then biotechnology research and commercialization so that is what we do then corporate farming and farm management so so nowadays uh, previously uh, farmers do contract farming um now nowadays contract farming is uh, slowly uh, slowly shifted to corporate farming okay then so these are the emerging sectors in agri business okay so uh, uh, there are uh, there are lot of Uh, agriculture produces they have been value added they are sold in the market so among them i took a coconut i want to give a little elaborate talk on the coconut so why means so india is the one of the leading producers of coconut so in the world they are the india producing 30 billion nuts per annum coconut is growing the 30 in going in the 19 state and three union territories then average yield of coconut is 18 nuts per palm per year so why i have to consider in coconut mean so gdp so is considered gdp is 20000 crores alone we are we are getting uh, alone from coconut processing see that how much coconut is important to our indian agriculture and indian economy okay so what are the health benefits of coconut so it is the excellent for immunity they are antiviral antibacterial antifungal and antiparasitic nature they can kill the harmful bacteria viruses fungi and parasites so knowingly and unknowingly every day we are taking your coconut uh, in the form of raw coconut uh, coconut oil coconut milk or coconut water okay so what are the health benefits of coconut tender coconut so good for feeding infant suffering from intestinal disturbances they are the oral regurgitation media contains the organic compound vitamin and other good promoting substances in the tender coconut keep the body cool Uh, it is the diuretic diuretic means it tends to increase the flow of the urine so coconut oil is the antimicrobial agent apart from this it is possesses lot of antioxidant property that can slow down the aging process so when you apply the coconut oil so that can be that can be uh, that can detoxify the free radicals they are arrested from the metabolism okay mm. so first and foremost thing is getting the coconut nut so it is the first and foremost value added product we get from coconut from azo so separating the nut from the husk coconut that is called as a de-husking uh, de of coconut so the uh, so that can be done by the machine so using this machine we can uh, we can de-husk the coconut 120 to 2 like 200 nuts per hour okay so this is the de-husking machines okay then coconut defibring uh, it is the one of the value added product okay okay 
So coconut fiber is a natural fiber, which is extracted from the husk of the coconut that can be used in the production of floor mats, door mat, brushes, and mattresses. Then chitin is the fibrous material that is formed between the coconut cut cut internal cell as well as the, between the outer co outer uh, coat of the coconut. Okay. So whenever we want to have a white uh, chitin, mean, that must be harvested from the tender coconut or unripe coconut. So white chitin is used for making the final brushes, string rope, and finish net. So this is the coconut fiber uh, screening uh, machine, then coconut defibring machine. So after extracting the coconut fiber, that can be converted into bales, fiber uh, bales. Okay. So drying. Okay. So coconut must be dry. See, so this is one of the most important post-harvest operations. So that has to be dried in ambient temperature for several days. So before this dehusking, then only dehusking must be um, easy. Okay. So that is called as a, after dehusking, that is called as a coconut net. So when coconuts are now split open, that is called as a cobra. So it is called as a cobra, the cobra or that is called as a kernel or this also called as a meat, coconut meat. Okay. So whenever cobra, if you get a cobra, means that must be dried uh, within 24 hours. Otherwise, you get contaminated by the it can kind of uh, mold, uh, mold fungus. So when you store the coconut for long time, copra for long time refrigerator, even refrigerator, you could see the presence of uh, black colored fungus in that uh, copra. Okay. So copra can be dried continuously under sunny days. Uh, so, so that we can bring the moisture to 6% level. Okay. Whenever we use the uh, mechanical dryer, so we have to adjust the temperature 35 to 50 degrees centigrade for first 16 hours. Then only we can raise the temperature to 50 degrees centigrade until the moisture, uh, moisture content of cobra should be 96% in order to prevent the mold growth. Okay, okay. So apart from this, other value added product from coconut is so the coconut can be shaped, uh, tender coconut can be shaped in this area, in this area that can be that can be wrapped, that can be waxed, that can be film wrapped to reduce the water losses. So why we cannot store the tender coconut for a long time? Why? Well, because of loss in water. So whenever we wrap with, whenever we wax and wrap with the film, so we can extend the shelf life of the tender coconut. So these days, so we have introduced Magnetic University. We have introduced atma, uh, CA, CA storage, controlled atmospheric storage. So that means, so we are developing the high oxygen plastic film so that we can uh, wax and uh, film loop. So we can increase the uh, self life of the coconut nearly one month. Okay. So what is mean by desiccated coconut? Once coconut nuts are uh, coconuts are broken, then it is called as a cobra. It is called as a fresh kernel or a coconut meat. Okay. So that has to be shredded in the small powders. It can it has to be dried sixty to seventy six percent uh, seventy six degrees centigrade. To two percent moisture content level at that time, which contains in sixty five to sixty eight percent of the moisture. Okay, so this desiccation desiccated coconut can be used for making the uh, cakes, pastas, then chocolates. Okay, so uh, coconut milk. It is uh, everyone knows the coconut milk. It is the milky fluid, freshly extracted from the coconut kernel with or without addition of water. So, in case of uh, house, we we we, we stop uh, this process. Uh, we, we stop this until this. So, in case of uh, industry, then we add in the skim milk powder. Then that has to be pasteurized for ten minutes at seventy to seventy two degrees centigrade. Then at the end, we should contain the six percent of skim milk. Then nine point six percent of PSS. Okay. So in this way, coconut milk can be made. So it is the kernel. It is the it is the coconut nut. It is a kernel. So kernel from the kernel, we are getting the milk. And milk can be mixed with uh, skim milk powder. Then we can get a coconut milk powder. How it possible means? Okay, after making the coconut uh, milk, it has to be dry. Fifty to sixty percent moisture content level. So. So 50 to 60% TSS that has to be, that, that can be achieved by means of uh, draining the coconut milk under spray dryer. Okay. So the preparation of coconut milk is it is not interesting for the management audience. So here I want to emphasize that making the coconut yogurt. So when we go to the supermarket, we can find the yakult. 
uh, Yakult means that, that is Japanese product, which consists of Lactobacillus azophilus, then uh, Streptococcus thermophilus, then Bifidobacterium bifidi. So these are the bacteria. These are the probiotic bacteria. They are, uh, they are, they are present in the Yakult. So that gives the strength to the body. Okay. So when you we have to note this, bifidum bacterium bifidum, that is the bacteria exclusively present in the mother's milk. So no one knows how this bacteria enter into the mother's milk. So because of this bacteria, the newly born infant they are able to digest the uh, uh, food. Okay. So similar kind of product can be made by using the coconut yogurt with this bacteria. Okay. Then extraction of virgin coconut oil that can be extracted from the fresh, mature, then uh, mature kernel of the coconut by means of high feed centrifuge or low temperature process. This called as a virgin coconut oil. Okay. So these are the process of making the virgin coconut oil. So sometimes we can get the uh, coconut oil uh, by means of wet or dry process. In the uh, processing industry, we are getting the fresh coconut, it is called as a wet process. So they have to dry the coconut, they, they, they must, oil can be extracted. In case of dry process mean, then copra is dry, then it can be grinded, uh, then it, uh, when the finally made into flax, then afterwards oil can be expelled from the cobra. Okay. So uh, apart from this, we can get a coconut cream. Coconut cream is the coconut cream. It is a high fat cream like material obtained from the coconut milk by means of gravitational separation or centrifugation. So what is the use of this coconut cream means? So that can be used in sweet, making your sweets, desserts and puddings. Okay. So coconut cream can be uh, stored uh, for at least six months in this container. So once open, it should be stored in the refrigerator for subsequent uses. So this is the coconut cream. This is the coconut cream. Okay. Then coconut syrup means it is a translucent, free-flowing liquid prepared by the coconut milk, then addition of sugars, then we have to add a sodium phosphate, uh, it's a chemical. Okay, in this way, we have to, so it has to be boiled, it has to be boiled, so it reaches the TSS of 68 to 70 percent. So afterward, that must be stored in a sterile container, then sealed chromatically. So chromatically mean airtight container. So we have to seal the product under the airtight container. So similar way, coconut chips can be made. Kernel can be sliced in a thin and that may be crispy. Then mixed with the sweet uh, or salt that can be stored. So, so we, in this case, we can uh, we have to maintain this crispiness by uh, flushing the nitrogen gases. So we have to keep we, uh, we have we can keep the this kind of coconut chips for at least six months. Okay. So this is the processing of coconut chips. Okay. Coconut candy. So coconut candy is made from the coconut milk that is called a kernel, that is called as a kernel, then with, uh, with coconut milk. So coconut, uh, that is a kernel, that is a grated coconut that, that has to be washed with uh, coconut uh, milk, then remaining portion must be added, then we have to add the sugar, then that has, that has to be boiled, uh, that has to be cooked, that has to be cooked. So. Uh, so cooking should be continued until the drop of water adds that you are hard on that product, okay. So that is the right stage to start the cooking that has to be poured in a butter grease the pan, then allow to cool slightly, then that can be cut into desired sizes, then then that can be uh, individually wrapped in a cellophane seed, okay. Then coconut honey is similar to coconut um, uh, milk, so it is made from the uh, coconut water, Okay, so these are the value added product, uh, various value added pro product from the coconut. Okay, see, so from the one metric ton of copra, copra can be obtained from the 7,000 7, coconuts. So, if you want to obtain one metric ton of coconut oil, so we have to use uh, 11,000 nuts or 1,500, 1,560 kg of copra. So accordingly, you have to raise the value of the coconut oil. So, so this is the conversion ratio for the value of the product obtained from the coconuts. Okay. So apart from this, what are the other value added products of coconut waste mean? Charcoal. By burning the cell, cell of the coconut under controlled condition with the supply of limited air, we can get a coconut cell charcoal. 
So similarly, we can get a activated carbide that can be used in solvent recovery process. So we can get the kyrpith. So kyrpith is acting as a menu. Apart from this, kyrpith and the coconut bunch waste can be mixed with the one is to one ratio. It is the best suited medium for the mushroom cultivations. Okay. So this is the present and uh, future prospects of coconut processing in India. So, so coconut industry uh, must be considered this uh, this fact. Okay. So apart from the coconut, we can uh, there are other value added products like uh, fruits and the vegetables, for example. So from the fruits and vegetables, we can make a beverages, juices, concentrates, pulp, slices, frozen and dehydrated product. Then we can get a wine from the fruits and uh, fruits. Okay. In case of apple, we can remove the uh, we can remove the skin. So in order to prevent the darkening of the skin, that can be sealed hermetically. A water container that will prevent the darkening of the uh, apple without uh, skin. Okay. So uh, apple can be cooked and canned apple can be sold. Then dehydrated apple, frozen apple, canned apple juice, and then apple chars can be made from the apple. So these are the value added product from the apple. Then apart from this banana, from the banana we can make a banana powder. Banana flour, then banana puri, banana chips, banana jam, jelly, then banana vinegar. So the most important value added product from the grapes are wine and raisins. Then apart from this, we can make a jam and juice. In Goa, we can make a jam, jelly, pickle, puri, then uh, puri can. Then sometimes we can make a wine from Goa. In case of pineapple, papaya, mango, we can make a jam and jelly, then pickles. Then in case of mango, so when we consider a mango, uh, see the, the so when we get a uh, juice from the mango, that is a tarbu. Okay, so that uh, we can uh, we can uh, taste the bitter, we can feel the bitter taste in the mango juice. So why? Because means mango that uh, juice contains the pectin, so that gives the bitter taste. So when we uh, by simple processing we can add a enzyme, pectinase enzyme that will lyse the pectin, so we can get a pectin-free mango. So that will so that is free from bitter taste. So apart from this, milk and dairy products we can get a ton of milk, skim milk, ice cream, butter, and ghee. For example, here. How to make a skim milk? So skim milk means so we can remove the fat and the vitamin A, other fat soluble vitamins. So once fats are removed from the skim milk, the milk that is called as a skim milk. So that can be fetched for high therapeutic uh, value. For example, uh, diabetic patient, obesity patient, high cholesterol, heart patients, uh, they, they can uh, they can use skim milk. So what is the fat content of the skim milk? Is 0.1 grams per 100 ml. Then how to make a toned meal? Then skim meal can be mixed with buffalo meal. So we can reduce the fat of the buffalo meal to 3%. So this kind of buffalo milk is uh, suitable for malnourish uh, malnourishment children, then pregnancy women or during pregnancy. Okay. So double toned milks are uh, milk are uh, prepared as that of toned meal. Here, fat content is not less than 1.5%. Okay. So, what are the other value-added milk products? For example, culture. so milk uh, after pasteurization, then we can make a dagi, then we can make a lassi, we can make a yogurt, then we can make a cheese. So, uh, yogurt, as I said earlier, so the yogurt, the yogurt that is uh, in the supermarket, you can find the name of Yakult. So that is a Japanese product. Japanese, uh, they are strongly believe this. Uh, this is an anti-cancer agent. So Japanese diet mostly consists of beef and non-vegetarian diet. So that leads to colon cancer. When we consume, when they consume Yakult, which consists of, as I said earlier, which consists of lactobacillus, acidophilus, uh, Streptococcus thermophilus, and Bifidobacter brevi. So when we, after pasteurization, we add this bacteria that will ferment the milk into Yakult. So that when we drink that yogurt, when Japanese drink this yogurt, they can suppress the cancer. Okay. Then condense the milk and heat desiccated milk. So that leads to forming the koa, then ghee. And then uh, acid precipitated milk that leads to making the paneer and the ice cream. So from the milk, we can make a butter and ghee. So these are the traditional value added product uh, obtained from the milk and dairy products. Okay. So this, uh, now we are getting the milk from soya, so that can be added with the various flavors. Okay. 
So when we use the fish, that is a basic fish, so that can be perishable, that cannot be stored for a long time. So we, uh, fish can be dried, so that can be you know, that can be stored for a long time. So it is the one of the value, value additions. Since from our tradition, we are following this uh, value additions. Okay. Then, so these are the some of the value added product uh, that is we, we get from the uh, jasmine, jasmine oil, then calendula oil. So from the calendula flower, we get the calendula oil. Then basil oil from the basil leaves. Then mint oil from the mint leaves. So whenever we go for this kind of value addition, so what is the international price? See this, jasmine oil per kg, which pitches to almost 10,000 US dollar. Okay. So apart from this, we have a, we can have, we can have a guava, cedar from the guava. So it is a nutritious, the refreshing agent. Then we can make a anala, we can make a jelly from anala. So anala jelly made from the anala fruit, uh, that is a pulp, juice. So which is uh, rich in vitamin C, citric acid, minerals, and TSS and sucrose. From the goat milk, we can make uh, kufi, kul, kulfi and paneer. Okay. So this is the banana peel. So mostly we, uh, we waste the outer coat of the banana fruits. So from this, we can make a banana pickle. So in this way, we can increase the uh, income of the farmers. Okay. So lychee wine. So wine made from the lychee fruit. So this is most famous in China. Then banana beverages. We can make a ban. We can make a beverages from the mixing the banana uh, juice and tomato juice at the ratio of one is to one. Okay. Then we can make a pilu. So pilu crust and pilu jam from the pulp of the pilu fruits. Then uh, we can may, we can have a value added product from the bubble. So bubble is mostly a goat can eat this part. So from this part and see we can have a uh, we can have a tea. Okay, a coffee. Okay. So tobacco oil. We can make a tobacco oil from the tobacco. Then these are the, some of the extruded uh, product from the millets. So these days our university is mostly concentrated on minor, minor millet, especially banyan millets. Okay, there which is rich in iron. Okay. Then nowadays we are practicing the asmo air drying of the vegetables. So now we are successful in the uh, standardizing the asmo air drying for the butter gourd and cauliflower. So this is the value added product from the ragi. So ragi biscuit. So from the jackfruit, we can make a chili cut. This is one of the value added product from the jackfruits. Then designer pork. So from the pork, we can make a pork sausages. So that is the grinded pork that added with the low salt. So we can that that can be semi cooked or partially cooked. That can be uh, vacuum packed. So we can extend the shelf life for thirty days. Okay. So in our laboratory, we made a value addition for our biofertilizer since we are working in microorganism. So we, we now traditionally ten years before now we are selling the biofertilizers in the form of uh, lignite lignite based. So now it costs is around sixty rupees per kg. So from this, we we uh, we, uh, we made uh, we improved our product into liquid. So when we go with when you go with the carrier based material, shelf life is only for three months. When you go with liquid formulation, per liter cost around three fifty rupees. So we can store it for one year. So again, farmers feel this are bulky. So again, we do research. Then now we made a uh, freeze dried and I press the cultures. So like a shampoo sachet. Okay. So. Uh, 10 gram, so we made it in 10 gram. 10 gram packet is cost around 80 rupees. 10 gram packet sufficient enough to treat the seeds packet for one hectare. That means 2.5 acres of the seeds can be treated with this kind of small uh, uh, material stored in the small sauces. Okay, so that is 8,000 per kg. So accordingly, production cost also raised, but still we are earning the three or five fold income uh, selling of this product. Okay. So we have done a research in Panjamadam, is a Dindical district, is a Paranayan is a Dindical district. So it is a Panjamadam is a southern you know, ethnic fermented fruit mix. So we have discovered the many probiotic bacteria from the Panjamadam. Our Panjamadam is able to suppress the lung cancer cell that we have proved in laboratory. Then, so nowadays Panjamadam taste is getting uh, getting uh, down. 
So we have developed a probiotic bacteria to ferment the uh, panjamaradam. That is a form of fruit mix. So at the end, we can uh, call it the panjamaradam. In this way, we are improving the panjamaradam quality. We have got the uh, FSS approval for, for this product. Okay. So now I move on to conclusion part. So Indian agribusiness opens a huge growth opportunities. So it must gear up for the, to face the second agriculture revolution. Through farmer corporate partnership, then our agri business must oriented on the oriented markets. So we have to reduce the post harvest the harvest losses, uh, bringing the all uh, all operation in a single platform. Then we have to create the wealth for farmers investor. Then we have to invest much amount uh, to develop the infrastructure facilities. We have to uh, we have to establish uh, food processing industry. Okay. Then we have to transform the seller by your relationship in the strategic partnership between the corporate and farmer to get the win-win outcome. Okay. Then we have to expose the traditional Indian agriculture to modern technology. So in this way, we can create the lot of opportunities uh, for agriculture processing, agriculture producers. We can generate the more employment. We can increase the farm producers. We can ensure the uninterrupted sustainable supply chain in agribusiness. So, so now I have ended my talk. Any, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, sir, uh, uh, sir, I have uh, two questions from the audience. Sir, please, sir. Uh, sir, the first question uh, from the audience, uh, what are the challenges faced in the agri-retail supply chain, sir? Sir, so only thing is our farmers, our, our farming system, uh, till now, we are substance level of farming. We raise, farmers are they raise the produce for their own use, not for their, they are not aiming the market. Okay, this is, they are farmers are that not educated, they are not aware of this. So, two or three decades, we are educating the farmers, use of biofertilizer. Then still we are so, getting surface call from the farmers. So, what is the biofertilizer? So, where I can get? So, this kind of awareness. So, we have, Still, we are creating the awareness to the farmers to go for processing and value addition, sir. So these are the like you know, So these are the challenges in Indian agriculture. Apart from this, so we many times we fail to supply the uh, uninterrupted uh, inputs to the farmers. Then farmers, uh, we, we we fail to change the farmers' mindset. One farmer goes with the tomato, then every farmer goes with the tomato. They are not thinking of alternate crops in case of cold delta region. So they are used to raise the paddy and paddy, paddy after paddy, paddy after paddy. So the paddy after paddy that will definitely, uh, they are not getting, they are not going to get the high yield. But even, uh, so they are, uh, they raise the paddy crop. They are uh, getting, they, they are expecting water from the cavalry. So now we are educating the farmers. Uh, we can go with alternate crops, paddy after pulses, so rice palo pulses. So, so in this, these are the challenges. Apart from this, we don't have much storage facilities to store the farm producers. So that is why whenever we are getting the pumper yield, so at the time, uh, tomato goes to, now, now in this scenario, so tomato goes to uh, uh, less than uh, one rupee per kg. So these are the challenges uh, faced by Indian farmers or Indian agric agriculture. So thank you, sir. Thank you for giving your practical applications and... Uh, uh, it's a real time oriented uh, sir uh, second question is uh, uh, the yes, central sir. government uh, central government is stating uh, one country one ration similarly oh, the same uh, the same way you used one nation one market but what are the uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir what are the opportunities for one nation one market to the consumers uh, uh, this is the slogan is given in the that the farm produce act recently enacted by the central government sir that is a one nation one market so what is the main thing, sir? Uh, each and every state and unit entity, they have an APMC, Agriculture Producers Marketing Society, Marketing Committee. So uh, in, uh, they, the farmers, they have to sell that uh, their product only in the uh, APMC. So outside the sale of their produce in the uh, produce in the AP, outside the APMC, that is considered a black market in some of the states, especially in Punjab. Whereas Indian, uh, whereas Tamil Nadu condition, Tamil Nadu government given full liberty to the farmers, they can sell their product if they wish. They can uh, sell the product APMC, or otherwise they can sell the product to any traders. Okay, sir. 
So yeah, because of these hurdles, because of these hurdles, especially some of the farmers in the uh, uh, several states, so our Indian government they made uh, they enacted this law so so that they can they are given freedom to. Uh, sell their farm produces at uh, at higher prices so many uh, main fear of the farmers is that they don't get minimum support price so that is not abolished whenever they can sell the produce in open market then the open market price is high they can sell the produce in the open market then when the open market price is uh, uh, getting down they can sell their product in apmc by paying the market fee so that is why government of india um, Uh, the uh, government of india to launch the one nation and one trade uh, yes, sir, yes sir yes sir yes uh, sir sir uh, thank you very much sir uh, sir we can uh, reassemble in the afternoon sir okay sir thank you very much for your cooperation much, sir. yes sir thank you sir <laughs> okay sir shall i leave the meeting sir uh, please sir please sir thank you sir okay sir subhasini madam Yes, sir. Ah, uh, we can wind up, ma'am. Afternoon, two uh, thirty, we can clear some problem. Okay, dear participants, we'll resume.